Hey everybody, good morning. Let me move over here this morning on the Devo so you guys can see that really cool old harmony guitar. Super neat. And it's so good to be in the house with you guys. Missed you yesterday. Mondays, hi, I've been uh, kind of busy, so um, I've kind of designated Mondays as my my busy day. And I uh, and, uh, haven't been able to get into the Devos. So... Um, we are in Exodus chapter 15, and welcome to the Morning Devo with Bo. Oh, Bo Willett's my name, if you don't know. And these Devos are kind of uh, just down to earth through the Bible times. Nothing too crazy, nothing, uh, you know, incredibly, you know, grandioso profound. Just uh, simply reading the Bible and in the morning <coughs> and gleaning some good stuff from it for sure. And uh, really wanting to honor God's word, right? Just honor the word. Let the word speak. And uh, that is so beautiful. Uh, I love the comment corner already this morning. Got so many people in the house ready to go and totally stoked. Uh, good to see my mom, too, uh, in the house. Dot Willette Shackford. Good day to all Devo lovers. Well, good day to you, Mama. And uh, mom had a, this is her birthday month. Uh, so uh, all month, birthday month for mama. That's right. And uh, praying for mom for sure. And uh, so let's get into it. We're in Exodus. We're kind of moving through the Bible. You could always check out the archives at my YouTube channel, just my personal channel. And there you uh, will get all the... Uh, uh, pretty much all the New Testament, other than um, three of the Gospels, I think. And then, uh, and now we're in the Old Testament. So, then Moses and all the people of Israel sang a song. So this is after Pharaoh was drowned into the sea, and they pull out a tune. Now this tune, I'm not sure when it was written, but there's some hints maybe to when it was written, and it might have been written a lot later than we think. Um, for particular reasons, but I don't want, want to get so much in the minutia of all that jazz. Uh, I'll leave that to some of my, my beautiful brothers on A Reason for Hope at 5 o'clock, as I normally do. And I just want to just think about this wonderful song, Israel sang this song to the Lord. Now, this is what we do and why we worship. We sing a song to the Lord. I love that. Is my is my worship God directed? You know, this morning is my worship God directed? Is it to the Lord or is it to something else? Or is it just to the Lord? What is my worship? What kind of direction is it leaning in? And while you know, certainly many worship just things on the earth, creeping things, crawling things, things that move, things with two legs, right? People, we tend to worship a lot of things um, on the planet. Sometimes we worship uh, things that aren't even alive. They're just may, man, human being made uh, items, and we can worship those things as well. Um, or we can worship, like I said, the creation uh, but we want our worship to be God-directed. And it's to Yahweh. It's to the Lord, right? It's to Yahweh, the name of God, Yahweh. That's how. That's what we think it is, the pronunciation. We're not quite sure, but uh, it is a, um, what is it called, a hypothetical, um, uh, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, uh, hypothesis, right? An educated guess, right? That's, I think that's it, a hypothesis. So, um, <clears throat> I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Oh, man, haven't you ever r sang that chorus before in church? I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. That was a, 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 a kind of chorus that we sang probably, uh, I'd say, 25, 30 years ago. Um, does anybody remember it, though? Um, for he has climbed triumph gloriously is one of those cool songs now sometimes when i'm leading worship like i will this sunday or wednesday i think 
at the fellowship. I, I like to do a lot of older songs, even though a lot of people never heard them nowadays. So they they kind of think they're new, but they're they're quite old. And uh, it says he has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. So the worship is about, you know, God's triumph, God's glory, right? God's fame, if you will, you know, his name. And uh, Laura says, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, take joy, my king, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Oh, yeah. I mean, who does not know that tune, right? That's an awesome one. <clears throat> Some of the younger generation <clears throat> in the body of Christ, they probably go, wow, that's a new tune. What a cool little little tune that is. <clears throat> but it's not new. It's a beautifully old tune for sure. Yeah, I love this. You know, talking about God, what God has done. You know, why do we worship God for his wonderful actions, his wonderful salvation, right? That's really what this is hinting at, his salvation to the people of Israel. The Lord is my strength and my song. Isn't that cool? You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. Has anybody sung that one? You know? Um, uh, yeah, the Lord is my strength and my song. That's right. Uh, he is my song. He is the the one I like to sing about, the one I like to, you know, adore. You know, how do, how do we show adoration and glory? We usually do it in love songs, right? And, uh, and this is kind of what Moses is doing. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. He has given you victory. This morning, let's remember that he has given us victory. I want to remember that this morning. I want to take a moment and just go, Hey, God, you have given me victory. And that reminds me of a passage of scripture. I was looking for my other, my old Bible. You guys have ever seen my Bible? It's pretty, pretty ratty. Um, it's not in good shape for sure. But you know what? We might say it's in beautiful shape, right? Because it's just, uh, it's definitely been used. But I want to say this, man. The so Now, this is G G Paul in the New Testament talking about uh, us being changed, us being, in a sense, made into uh, a heavenly human being instead of an earthly human being, a heavenly human being. And he says, when this corruptible, our body, has put on incorruption, this heavenly body, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, isn't that cool? Victory again. We see that in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians 15, 54. Isn't that cool? Very neat. Just as Moses says, hey, the Lord has given me what? Victory. So Paul says in the New Testament, guess what? We have been given victory. There's going to be a come a time where death will be swallowed up in victory. In God will conquer death for each of us. Death will not be the end. Death will be what? A transformation into life, into the new body. Whoa, that's crazy. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Right? Now it says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. Very cool. So Moses writes about this victory and he says, this is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Now I like love this little section too. And there's so many cool sections of this song. You won't get to all of it, but I hope you just see how you can break this down and really just go, wow, what a Devo, man. What a cool reflection, right, on, on God. Uh, Paula says, my Bible is starting to look like a notebook <laughs> from everything that I am learning. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, man. Bob says, someone who's got a Bible who's falling falling apart seldom has a life that, ha or seldom has a life that is, I guess, not falling apart, right? Um, uh, that's, that's, so now I love this section. This is my God. Isn't that cool? It's kind of a personal, hey, God, you're my God today. I want to think of that. You're my God today and have that personal possessiveness that God is my God you know it's not just my father's God right it's not just my mother's God but it's my God 
too, taking that responsibility. I don't want to be that person who goes, hey, that's, you know, that's, it's just something in my family, so it's something I do. No, no way. It's my God, and I like that, you know. Um, So it says, the Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Whoa, what a cool passage, huh? God is a battler, you know. Um, I'm a, I, I've always been a sports person, kind of around sports my whole life. My, my parents definitely are uh, sports people. And, uh, and uh, you know, you always love a battler, right? You always like that person who battles hard and, and really gets in the trenches and does the work. And, and here it says, the Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he has hurled into the sea. The finest of Pharaoh's officers. Sorry about my speaker system. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I think that's the second time it's happened. It says, Pharaoh's chariots and army he has hurled into the sea. The finest of Pharaoh's officers are drowned into the Red Sea. The deep waters gushed over them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Ooh, this is good. This is good. And uh, your right hand. Again, this idea of power. Now, we're going to see the arm of the Lord mentioned in this song, too. And remember that arm of the Lord should always be a reference in your mind to Isaiah 53. The reason why is because Isaiah was a prophet of God around 700 years before Christ who talked about Jesus coming on the scene as the arm of the Lord. And when you think of the arm of the Lord, you think of the strong activity of God. God really moving in the world. And I like that. God likes to move in the world. He wants to move um, in power in our life. Your right hand. Yeah, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, Bob says. That's correct. Colossians chapter 3, New Testament. Colossians chapter 3, 1 and 2. Read it. Jesus is at the right hand. Uh, Psalm 16 says, at the right hand of God are pleasures forevermore. Oh, man, Jesus is pleasurable. Woo, that's cool, too. Yeah, God is powerful. And it says, says, your right hand, O Lord, smashes the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow those who rise against you. Don't you love songs, how they just are, it's like they're the, it's like they're the fireworks of, you know, of expression. Uh, you know, um, I love that. It's a form of poetry, a form of uh, sometimes even exaggeration. Sometimes you'll see songs that exaggerate love or exaggerate affection or exaggerate. Um, they mystify certain topics. And uh, songs are great like that. And one of the beautiful things of songs, too, is they get lodged in your head. And so when we sing songs uh, over and over, we tend to get them stuck in our brain. And that can be really a beautiful thing when you're down and out. And then all of a sudden, as Laura Walker keeps bringing up, you start thinking the battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, battle and strength, uh, you know, uh, to the Lord. You know, we start thinking of these old, uh, you know, for me, they're older songs, but... um, very cool choruses and you know those things resound in our hearts and you know you you sing and you make melody in your heart unto the lord um yeah another colossians chapter three idea so your right hand smashes the enemy in the greatness of your majesty you overthrew the throw those who rise against you who who has risen against you who rises against me you know what has come against us what has jesus overcome yeah, you know, Kurt says the Petra praise albums are awesome on those old worship songs, and they would sing praise and glory to Jesus Christ. That's right, Petra, a wonderful, check those old rockers out, man, and their praise to the Lord, man, really cool stuff. Uh, don't you love it, though, just the, the just constantly going on about the greatness of his majesty, the overthrowing of the enemies, as a blast of your breath, the water's piled up. God's depicted as a human being here, right? And given kind of human attributes in the song, uh, like a giant human being, you know, who's got these, 
you know, mighty strength. The blast of your breath, the waters piled up. The surging water stood straight up as a wall. In the heart of the sea, the deep waters became hard. The enemy boasted, I will chase them and catch up with them. I will plunder them and consume them. I will flash my sword. My powerful hand will destroy them. Right? My powerful hand, my breath. But you blew out of your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Now this is popular throughout the Bible, popular type of literature where people attribute to God human qualities. And that's something to grasp. It's not saying that God, the literal breath or God's literal hand, it's not saying a giant hand was in the air or God, he, they saw God breathe, like that kind of thing. It's attributing those kind of human-like qualities to something that is indescribable. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness? Meaning amongst the judges, amongst, amongst the powerful, who is like God? Glorious in what? Now I like this. Glorious in holiness. Oh man, that's neat. In this song, it talks about God's holiness. What is his holiness? Well, it's God is separated from me. He's, he's different in me in that he is holy. That is God's number one attribute that everything else stems from. God's holiness. So whatever attributes you look at in the Bible, God's love, God's judgment, all that kind of stuff, it all stems out of, it all comes out of God's holiness. God is sovereign. He is separated from us in purity and perfection. God is holy. Awesome in splendor. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? It says, performing great wonders, you raised your right hand, your right arm, and the earth swallowed our enemies. With your unfailing love, you led the people you have redeemed. Again, that word redeemed. Remember we defined it, that word? To recover ownership by the paying of a specific sum. The recovering of ownership by paying of a specific sum. God has bought his people. He has paid a price. The price was the firstborn. Woo! That's right. The firstborn of Egypt all died male and remember now there's the law of the firstborn in israel all firstborn are the lords jesus is the firstborn he is what the lords yeah so we are redeemed we are redeemed by christ on the cross that's right bob so man i want to think of that this morning today that i've been redeemed that i have a powerful god who's done great things that i can remember the songs of the Lord. I can kind of think of him. Now, notice how it gets into even things that I don't even know if they've happened yet. It says, the people hear and tremble. Anguish grips to those who live in Philistia, in, in the place of the Philistines. Now, this isn't, I don't mean happened yet as in our day. I mean happened yet as in their day. Uh, meaning uh, at the time of the Red Sea, they haven't conquered Israel yet. They haven't gone into the land. They haven't uh, fought all the area of what's called the Canaanites, the tribes of the of the Canaanites. And it, this is an interesting song because it breaks out and it says, hey, the people here and tremble. Anguish grips all the land. The leaders of Edom are terrified. Canaan, they want to melt away. Terror and dread fall upon them. The power of your arm. This is very revelation-like where when God's judgment comes on the scene and his power's on the scene, what do people do with the earth? They want to hide themselves. They want to melt away, right? They don't want to confront the holy God, right? Um, yeah, you will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. It says uh, the people that you've purchased, right? Uh, you will plant them. God wants to plant me. He wants to give me a foundation. Uh, he wants to put you down, get you some roots, right? Um you know, it's important for us to get some roots. God, help me to stay planted in a place where I can grow and and not only grow, but go, you know, and that would be awesome. And it says also, you will bring them in, 
or I read that, plant them on the mountain and place, O Lord, uh, a place, O Lord, reserved for your dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioters rushed into the sea, they brought the water crashing down on them. But the people of Israel had walked on what? Dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine and led all the women as they played their tambourines and danced. And Miriam sang this song. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, and he has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. Man, she's t- So this, the start of this song is from Miriam, right? It's got a couple composers, but Miriam's definitely one of them. She's called a prophetess, meaning she had a really special message to the people of Israel, to the Hebrews, to the 12 tribes of Jacob. And, uh, you know, this is very cool. Again, remember how women have been an important part of Exodus and the narrative that we have seen. Women have been really the, the action people, really got things going at the beginning, took the, uh, was very courageous in the uh, um, uh, before Pharaoh. And it's really cool here. You see Miriam, Aaron's sister, taking that, uh, that role as a prophetess and speaking words into people as well. You know, you're a woman, you speak words, you speak God's words into people, speak into their lives. I love that. Very early on, right? Before any women's lib movement came about, <laughs> you know, pretty radical. And then it says, then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea And they moved out of the desert to Shur. They traveled in this desert for three days without finding any water, and they came to the oasis of Mara. The water was too bitter to drink, so they called the place Mara, which means bitter. We're going to talk more about this place later. Then the people complained and turned against Moses. What are we doing to going to do? What are we going to drink? They demanded. Now notice how this works. So Moses cried out to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Moses threw it into the water and made the water good to drink. Now, what healed the water? What healed the water? A piece of what? Wood. Kind of cool, right? Jesus was laid on a piece of what? Wood. That's right. The wood that Christ was crucified on, yeah, that's right, uh, uh, Tamara. It's wood. But the, the, that wood that Christ was crucified on, the cross, right, turns our bitterness, turns the bitterness of sin and slavery and gets rid of it. Oh, man, so true. Uh, Laura says, my mom was the first person who spoke the word of God to me at home as my Sunday school teacher. Amen, man. What a powerful, we have to uphold moms, man. Moms are those kind of prophetesses in the home for sure. Uh, Speaking over their kids, their family, the word of God. So powerful. Uh, What happens to a land that is, that minimizes the role of moms? Mm, uh, Might be ours, right? Absolutely. So it's very cool, right? The bitter water is made good by the wood. I love that picture. Uh, Yeah, what turns my bitterness, what gets rid of my bitterness? It's the cross. It was there at Mara that the Lord set before them the following decree as a standard to test their faithfulness to him. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all of his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent to the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So God has now taken possession uh, of uh, Israel. He is going to meet them. He's going to have this special relationship with them. He will be their God. They will be their people. And he says, if you listen to me, then there will be a blessing. He says, I am the Lord who heals you. Yeah, you come to me and you're not going to get what those other people who have hardened their hearts will get. You will something you will be blessed 
there will be a blessing for you. And Jesus said it this way, don't worry about those who kill your body or do harm to your body, right? Don't worry about that. Worry about life eternal. And, you know, this is where our focus should always lie, is, is that God is a God who heals us. Not only does works of healing in the here and now, but he also obviously gives us a future grace, a future hope, right, in eternal life. So after leaving Mara, the Israelites traveled to the Oasis. That's the name of our Wednesday night service, the Oasis service. The Oasis of Elam, where they found 12 springs and 70 palm trees. They camped there besides the water. So the backpackers finally camp and settle down a little bit. Now God's going to give them a long time in this wandering wilderness. They, uh, what could have been an 11-day journey is going to result in a year or so journey. And God's going to work on getting the Egypt out of Israel. Get in Egypt. Even though they left Egypt, now it's going to be kind of a long time. They're going to have to work on, God's going to work on getting the Egypt out of them. Does, it, does that make sense? They got to work on getting the Egypt out of them. You know, pulling, sometimes I got, you know, God's got to get the Egypt out of Bo. You know, Egypt representing that old fleshly nature. And sometimes there's something for me in the future, but God's got me where I'm at right now because he's got to get the Egypt out of Bo before I can move forward. So I'm going to, I, I need to be patient with God, knowing that God does have a reason to put me where I'm at. And uh, I got to trust that. So, hey, what a cool thing. Um, you know, um, just a very cool chapter, a lot of great things. Again, if you guys have a bunch of questions, you could always ask the, the boys at A Reason for Hope at five, you guys know that, and you guys could ask those questions. If you're new here, thanks so much for tuning in to the Morning Devo. Hope you guys get focused on the Lord uh, today, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.